I read over 10 books this month and for me that's a lot. I generally read four to five books every month and that's when I'm like on top of everything. Usually realistically it's three to four but 10 books is different. That is the most that I've ever read in a single month and I'm not gonna lie I'm pretty proud of myself. And most of these books were really good if not just average but there were only one or two that I just completely didn't like. So today I just want to talk about the ones that I didn't get to mention that much or ones that I just want to add more detail to. But first I would love to thank today's sponsor which is Bedshare. Bedshare makes the most adorable, durable, and high quality bedding that I have ever seen. They sent me some things for the fall season and I'm absolutely obsessed. Now my current favorite thing is their waffle weave cotton blanket. Now I got this really beautiful green color but they have so many different colors. They have so many different sizes. I also love the fact that the comforter is made out of the same material so it's just a lot thicker and it's also the 300 thread count 100% cotton as well so it's extremely breathable and durable and I just love of all the color options they have. Now for the comforter, if you can't tell, I got this really nice beige color, but then I wanted to add a little bit of pizzazz, a little bit of color. So I got this in this green color and I just feel like they accent each other really well. I think it's perfect for the cold season and I'm just obsessed. I love it so much. So if you also wanna try out a few of their products, they have like wearable blankets, they have the bedding, they have sheets, and all different sizes and different colors. I would highly recommend using the link in my description box and getting some things for your yourself as well. I think it'd be a perfect gift to either give to friends and family or to just keep for yourself. Thank you again Bedshare for sponsoring this portion of the video. We are starting off strong in like the worst way with a book that just had so many disappointments. It was just so annoying. I wish I was lying because I had really high hopes for it and that is Assistant to the Villain. When people initially started telling me to read Assistant to the Villain, everyone just mentioned how it's enemies to lovers, it's super popular on book talk, my first mistake, and the the fact that it's just like a woman empowered helping this guy who's supposed to be bad but he's actually a really good person and so it checked off all the boxes for me it sounded like something that I usually vibe with something that I generally like because enemies to lovers is my bread and butter y'all know this so I went into this book expecting something really great and I just ended up with a little huh you know like I left with mm. Mm, mm, I love the taste of nothing type of thing. And that is because it was beyond cliche and cringy. Ugh. God. I mean, on a book talk scale, it was pretty manageable. And that's the only reason why I gave it three out of five stars instead of something lower because it wasn't awful, but I just thought it was gonna be here and it was just here, you know? It just barely made the height requirement type of thing. Now this story follows Evie Sage. She's pretty much the sole breadwinner for her family at the moment. Her dad is gravely ill and her sister is super young and then her mother's just not in the picture. So right now she's just looking for a job and while she's out on the hunt for a job, she runs into the villain. So this guy, he's on the run. Everyone in town knows him. He's supposed to be the baddest of the bad and he doesn't care about anyone. He kills people maliciously and somehow they end up meeting in the woods when he's running away from the king's guards and she's just on her way home. And then from there, he offers her a job that pays way more than any job that she's ever had. And that's how she becomes the assistant to the villain. Now, that sounds good. Everything sounds good. It's fantasy, enemies to lovers, it's romance, it's mystery. There's like some type of problem they're trying to solve. Everything sounds good. But the execution just made me want to, oh I literally, literally couldn't believe it. I was so upset. You know what really got me? <laughs> Literally every time I read this, my eyes would get stuck up in the back of my head because I kept rolling them. Like physically, I kept having a physical reaction to this. And that is when the villain kept calling her Little Tornado. What? <laughs> it is so cringy. Stop it. Stop it right now. I can't. I literally cannot. Like multiple times. She was trying to make that a nickname so bad. Oh my God. I was like, please, please, we get it. She's cute, she's quirky, she's not like the other girls. She's just so different. She's his little tornado. Like, stop. It was so forced, it was so cliche. Like for me, I don't think people understand. Enemies to Lovers is very popular, but it's very hard to execute correctly. I need to feel like these people genuinely hate each other. I need to feel like someone can get got at any moment, you know what I mean? And it just did not give that energy. It was playing as Enemies to Lovers, but we all saw the tension. It was basically like kiss already. That's how I felt when I was reading it. I just kept feeling like kiss already, shut up and kiss already. Cause it was like, there was no, you know, there was no real push and pull. It was just very obvious. And it was like, oh, I just can't because he's my boss. 
just do it. You're just dragging on this story this whole time and it was just no real tension there. You know what I mean? It was all fabricated because they refused to acknowledge their feelings. And usually it's nice when they refuse to acknowledge their feelings, but usually with a good enemies to lovers, they have a good reason to hate each other or not to go about their romance or their feelings. And that makes you like stick to the story. That makes you want to keep going. But this felt so forced, so cliche. It literally felt like a step-by-step -step guide of how to write an enemies to lovers book. Like the basics, like, you know what I mean? There was no, mm, there was no real originality. There was no uniqueness. It just felt so cookie cutter. I honest to God figured out the mystery in the story way before they alluded to it. I figured out the other romances and things like that. It was just so painfully obvious for me. Like every point of the plot was so painfully obvious. I was like, oh my God, what are we doing here? But I will say, <laughs> let me calm down. Let me calm down. Cause it wasn't terrible. It wasn't, you know, Lucy score level or anything. <laughs> It was like, if it was a grade, it would be a C. Just a regular C, it wasn't incredible. You didn't fail or anything, but it's not something to necessarily boast about or tell other people about. And that was disappointing because everyone was like, oh my God, this story is so good. You're gonna love it, you're gonna love it. And again, the premise was so good. I loved like the extra characters, what they were representing and what they were supposed to be. But I just felt like the execution was so lackluster, so cliche. It was like a Wattpad story. Story. It read like a Wattpad story. I will say though, if I read this in middle school, I probably would have ate this up. I probably would have loved it. I probably would have made it my personality for at least a year or something like that. It gave that type of energy. So maybe I've just aged out of this genre or something, but it just didn't do it for me just didn't do it for me. I'm sorry. I know that's very unpopular. I know how popular this book is and I wanted to love it. Trust me. I wanted to love this book more than you wanted me to love this book, but it just didn't happen. What can I say? You know what book I did love though and definitely changed my life, like literally changed my life? Tuesdays with Maury. Tuesdays with Maury. Oh my goodness immediate five star. It literally could not have been anything but a five star. And let me just tell you why. Tuesdays with Maury is a real story about the author, Mitch Album, who reconnects with his old professor, Maury. And unfortunately, he reconnects with him 20 years after he was his professor and when he's dying. And so he decides to make it a point to see the professor every Tuesday until his demise to have their last thesis or their last class together. And it's all about the lessons in life that Maury learned throughout his life and the things that he wished he knew earlier and the things that he wants everyone to know. And it was just so beautiful. It was one of those books where I finished and I just had to sit there for like five minutes by myself, just contemplating life, contemplating my own journey, contemplating everything that I learned in this book. And I just was so in awe. I was literally speechless. Like books rarely leave me speechless, but with this book, I literally had to take a moment. I was just like, Wow. It was so good that I was genuinely so grateful that it was a book that was already out within my lifetime and something that I had the privilege of reading. It's a book that I feel like I can not only go back to time and time again for the rest of my life, but a book that I will never stop recommending to people. It was immediately like in my vault, like my top 10, one of the books that I absolutely love that I absolutely have to keep going back to. And that is so rare. You guys know how rare that is. And I just was so floored. I even did research after the book and I rarely do research. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But this one, I just felt led to do the research. Like I wanted to see the videos. I wanted to see the discussions. I wanted to see the interviews of Maury the professor just to see who this beautiful angel of a person was. You know what I mean? Like that's how good it is. If you don't listen to anything else from me, anything else from me in this video, it's to read Tuesdays with Maury. Now, you see, I really just wanna show you my nails, but I'm being serious. Be serious right now. You need to read this book. Like I can literally talk about this book for 30 minutes. It was just so good. I've never highlighted, dog-eared, tabbed a book as much as I have this book. It was just so, so incredible. Let me read some things to you so you understand the gravity of this book, okay? I can literally flip it anywhere and give you something profound. You ready? You ready for this? Watch. Somebody come watch this. I found one. 
<clears throat> it's like going back to being a child again. Someone to bathe you, someone to lift you, someone to wipe you. We all know how to be a child. It's inside of all of us. For me, it's just remembering how to enjoy it. Like, Maury is the most positive person. No matter what he's going through, he's like forcing himself to see how blessed he is, how much of a wonderful life he's had, and to see the beauty in the awful things. He is currently talking about how he no longer has the ability to take care of himself. And he's trying to find the joy in that. And he's explaining that to Mitch so that he doesn't feel bad for him. Like, who could do that? I don't know if I could be that strong if I was dealing with what he was dealing with and to just be positive like that and to spread so much love and joy. Could you do that? Because I'm not too sure. Like, it's just such a beautiful book. Let me, let me give you another one. Let me give you another one. Let's find something random. Oh my God, another banger. Okay, you ready? Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. This is when Mitch asked him about regrets and forgiving people. And Maury got really upset because he realized that he never got the opportunity to forgive one of his friends who tried to ask for his forgiveness when he was alive, but unfortunately he passed away. And so it really upset him and he started crying. And then Mitch says, I'm sorry for making him cry, making him emotional. And then Maury says, don't be, he whispered. Tears are okay. I continued rubbing lotion into his lifeless toes. He wept for a few minutes alone with his memories. It's not just other people we need to forgive Mitch he finally whispered we also need to forgive ourselves <sighs> I'm not done ourselves question mark yes for all the things we didn't do all the things we should have done you can't get stuck on the regrets of what should have happened that doesn't help you when you get to where I am Maury is literally constantly dropping bars like this constantly I am telling you this short book is gonna change your life. I feel like <laughs> I work for a church or something. Like, I feel like I need to go door to door and tell people, have you heard about our Lord <laughs> and Savior, Tuesdays with Maury? If you don't listen to anything else from me, pick this bad boy up, okay? It's literally changed my life. I am just still so awestruck by it. I can literally go anywhere in this book and read a banger. Like, it's so crazy. I could do this all day. I'm sorry. Last one. I promise last one. In the beginning of life, when we are infants, we need others to survive, right? And at the end of our life, when you get like me, you need others to survive, right? His voice dropped to a whisper. But here's the secret. In between, we need others as well. I literally can't. I literally, I I and I'm not even reading the ones that literally changed my life. Like all I'm saying is read this gosh darn mother freaking book. It is so beautiful. It is so good. And it stood the test of time. Like this was written in the nineties and still it is something that is so timeless, something that you can still get lessons from. I feel like it's something that I definitely need to read once a year just to remind myself of what's important in life and you should too. Now, the next book up is just as good, but for completely different reasons. And I'm honestly telling you, you need to check the trigger warnings for this book because it has literally every possible trigger you can think of. It is not an easy book to read. I am so grateful that I read it with my book club, my Patreon book club, because I don't think I could have gotten through this book by myself. It was so heartbreaking, so frustrating, but so well written. The story was so good. The plot was so good. The character development, the character development carried this book, okay? It was so incredible, but so heartbreaking. So prepare yourselves. Make sure you are prepared before you read this book because it is a doozy. It'll do a number on you. If anything, I think you should definitely read it with someone else because it's a lot to deal with on your own. I don't know if you do this as well, but whenever I read a book, I subconsciously like take on the tone of that book in real life. So if I'm reading a romance or a comedy, like I'm upbeat and I'm happy and I'm like giggling and happy about this experience. But if I'm reading a mystery, all of a sudden I'm looking behind my shoulder. I'm looking around. I'm making sure my neighbors aren't looking at me too long. You know what I'm saying? And with this book, it's so heartbreaking that you take on that sadness into your real life. Uh, at least I do. So if you're like that as well, be cautious because it is not an easy book. And that is Strange Sally Diamond by Liz Nougat. It is incredible. Let me just start off with that. I gave it a 4.5 stars only because I hated the ending. Me and my book club, we literally talked about it for so long. It was the one thing that kind of frustrated me so much. It was just, it almost felt lazy, but the whole book was so incredible that I couldn't take off a lot of points because of that ending, because everything else was so incredible. I will be doing a live reading with them tomorrow, actually, so it's gonna be passed by the time you see it, uh, but I'm just so excited because that was a really, 
really good book to read with other people. And let me just tell you why. Now, this story follows Sally Diamond. She is an Irish woman in her 40s who recently made the news because she put her deceased father, who was a retired psychiatrist, out in the bins because he made a comment in jest when he was alive, but she took it literally because Sally is socially deficient. She doesn't understand social cues, and that's because of her childhood and her trauma from her childhood. So once her dad passes away, she realizes she's completely on her own because her mother, who is also a doctor, passed away years before. And now she just has to figure out how to take care of herself on her own. Now, Sally doesn't know she has any trauma from her childhood. She just thinks she's different. She doesn't know why she's different, but she knows that she's different. And all this unwanted attention she gets from this situation with her dad causes a deep, dark secret from her childhood to be unraveled and for her to understand why she is the way that she is for the first time in her life. And she gets more and more information and she begins to unravel these secrets because her parents like kept that part of her life away from her just because they thought maybe she couldn't handle it. And she starts to unravel this secret in this past when her father dies and he leaves her letters for her to open up gradually and to learn more about her past. Now, I am telling you that is the briefest, easiest way to give a synopsis for this book because it gets so deep, so dark, so fast. Like, that is literally barely the surface of this book. It is such a complicated, dense book, but it's very short. It's relatively short. It's like 300 and something pages, but the story, the story feels like you're in a completely different world for years. It is so complex. There's so many twists and turns. You never see anything coming and everything just keeps getting worse. We just continue to say that in my Patreon book club, like it just keeps getting worse. How is it getting worse? How? How? But the one thing that just made me smile and that made me so happy is the fact that Sally Diamond is very reminiscent to a special someone in my heart, which is Eleanor Oliphant. She also went through something very traumatic and y'all know, if you've even been here for a second, you know that Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine, is one of my favorite books of all time. But both of these women are very similar in the way that they act and the way that they interact with other people and the trauma that they bring from their childhood. And so it's so interesting to see two completely different stories, but how how they kind of align as well. And maybe that's why I'm a little bit biased and why I love this story as well. But I will say everyone else in the book club loved it as well. It's not just me bringing my own biases. No, this is a really, really good book. It's a tough book, but it's so good. The plot, the story building, the character development. Give it up for the character development. Sally Diamond literally put in the work. Even people who don't have that type of childhood trauma, who are not socially deficient, can barely bring themselves to take care of their mental health, to go to therapy. When Sally figures out all of this stuff from her childhood, and when I say all, it's a lot, it would break most people. When she figures this out, she takes it in stride. And yes, she's struggling. Yes, she's not happy with the situation. Yes, she hates the memories that are, is flooding back to her, but she doesn't hide from it. She makes friends. She takes their advice when it's good advice. She knows right from wrong and she continues to push through to grow and to evolve because she refuses to let this define her. And it was just so beautiful to see. It was so incredible to read because she was unbelievably resilient. She was such an incredible character. She's one of my favorite characters, I think. She doesn't always make the right decisions, but she learns and she tries, like she actually tries. I think that gets a lot of people, that stumps a lot of people. I think when things are hard, it's easier not to even try at all, but she always tried and that was just so beautiful to see. It was such a good book. Definitely something I'm glad I read with other people. And it's so interesting because when I went to the bookstore and picked this book up, I literally only picked it up on a whim. I picked it up because when I got to the register, literally I was done shopping. When I got to the register, the Barnes and Noble rep was telling me like, oh, this book just came out. This is a Barnes and Noble pick. You should definitely pick it up. I think you would enjoy it. And just off of that, I was like, sure, why not? And it completely like awed me. Like I was completely floored. I couldn't believe how incredible it was. It's such a good book. Just to be careful before you read it because it is not for the faint of heart. It is a very tough book. It really is. But by the end of it, you will just be so proud of Sally. You'll be frustrated. I'm not going to lie. You're still going to be frustrated, especially with the ending. I just felt like the ending felt a little bit lazy. I don't know. It just didn't feel finite. I just, I don't want to say, like, I don't want to say too much, but it just didn't feel, you know, mm, 
mm, it didn't give mm, when it needed to give mm. you know what i mean if you've read it you know what i'm talking about when you read it you're gonna know what i'm talking about but overall it was such an incredible book i couldn't believe just on a whim that it was something that was going to be recommended and i'm really happy that we read it i don't think i could do it again or read another book after that that's like that but it was definitely really enjoyable actually we were talking about that in the book club we were like after this book we need something light i don't care what it is but it has to be something light like we cannot go hard book after hard book it's just too much so maybe take that advice if you do decide to read this book make sure you have something light and fluffy to line up right after it because it is a doozy now i'm not gonna lie to you this next book i don't even really understand how to explain it even while i was reading it there were often times where i just was kind of confused about what was going on but i just knew i was having a good time and that book is this is how you lose the time war this book was something else i have literally literally never read a book like this before. I don't know. It just left me very like shook a little bit because it was just so all over the place. But let me just read to you what Goodreads says this book is about because I think it's the best way to explain it because if I was just left on my own devices, I don't think I could even put this into words. It says, among the ashes of a dying world, an agent of the commandant finds a letter. It reads, burn before reading. Thus begins an unlikely correspondence between two rival agents hell-bent on securing the best possible future for their warring fractions. Now what began as a taunt, a battlefield boast, grows into something more, something epic, something romantic, something that could change the past and the future. Now, if you can't tell, this book is sci-fi, it's romance, it's enemies to lovers, it's high fantasy. There's a lot going on, but it's just so unlike anything that I've read that I don't know how to reference it. But I just know I rated this book four out of five stars. It was good. I enjoyed myself while I was reading it. It was very otherworldly. It felt almost like a Black Mirror episode. And I was saying this in the video where I initially uh, reviewed it, which is the seven books in seven days video. If you haven't watched that, watch it below. I really enjoyed doing that. It was very hard, but it was very fun as well. Also like and subscribe while you're down there. I mean, you're already down there. I mean, you're all, it's a very insane book. There's a lot going on, but I just loved the push and pull of these two main characters. And I loved reading each person's letter. They had a very unique way of that person or that entity finding the letter. And so I found myself waiting to see the next letter because it would read a letter and then you would just have the regular story, the regular plot. And then it would read the other person's letter and then go back to the normal plot as well. And I just found myself waiting till I was able to read the other person's letter. I just loved the back and forth. It was really beautiful to see and it was just so interesting being in this other world. I will also say as well when you read books like this, I feel like me personally, whenever I read anything, I need a musical score in the background. I need music to align with my imagination so it feels like a movie. Now when I read this, I listened to the Interstellar soundtrack and that to me paired so perfectly with this book. It felt like it was made for this book. It made it even more otherworldly and so other than, you know what I mean? So I would recommend recommend that for you. If you haven't read this book yet, just take my word for it, sit down, make sure you have enough time. And I think it's something that you can read in one sitting. If not, that's okay too. Doing that really put me inside the story. Like I was really engulfed in the story. So I definitely recommend that if you really want to understand or get to know the characters in this book, because it's something that's very popular. I've heard a lot of people talking about this book and no one really seems to be able to sum it up, but everyone really loves it. And that's how I felt after reading it too. I just don't really know what was going on but I had a good time and I enjoyed myself while I was there. I don't think there's any other book that has made me feel that way and there was even a time where towards the end I started tearing up like something was happening where I was like oh my god no no and I was just like worried. It was just really cool to be in that other space like it was just such an interesting book and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was so cool so different so futuristic that it really made you think about time itself and like where you are in your life and how far we are and how far we can go as a species. Like it was very cool. So I definitely recommend that too. The last book up is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. I gave this book four out of five stars. It was a very interesting read. And if you're not familiar with Neil Gaiman, he actually wrote Coraline. He wrote that in 2002 or published it in 2002. And then this book was published in 2013. However, they're very similar. I definitely got Coraline vibes. So if you like 
like Coraline, I think you'll really enjoy this book as well. But in this story, a middle-aged man returns home to attend a funeral, and even though the house that he grew up in is already gone, he's drawn to the farmhouse that's all the way at the end of the road because that is where he met a little girl named Letty Hempstock when he was seven. Now, he hasn't thought about Letty for decades, but going home made him reminisce about her, especially when he went back to the ocean at the end of the lane, which is the pond in her backyard. She used to call it an ocean. He sits there and he reminisces, and then all of a sudden, the memories from his childhood all come rushing back. And these are memories that are too dangerous, too fantastical, too unrealistic to really be true, but somehow they are. And wow, is this story dark and fantastical. It's insane. It's so crazy. There's so many times where you think you know where the story is going, and then it goes a completely different way, and it just keeps getting worse, and then all of a sudden it gets better. And I think that's because this author always balances like childhood innocence with like the horrors of real life. So it's just so interesting to see that duality in his books, and he did it again in this one. And it's actually really interesting. In uh, one of his interviews, he was saying how he wrote this book completely by accident. He was actually writing to his wife, and his wife is a musician, and she was out trying to create an album, and she was in Australia. So while he was missing her, he was like, you know what, I'm going to write her a short story. And then that short story turned into a novella. And then that novella turned into a novel. And he was just saying like, this is the first novel where he didn't realize he was writing a novel. And I just think that's so interesting because the story flowed so well. It just felt so completely orchestrated and really thought out, but he was just going off of his heart and just completely freehanding it basically. So that was so cool to see that that was his experience while writing it. Now this book kind of explores memory and imagination and the fine line between extraordinary and just ordinary and it's just really cool to see all of these different topics being talked about or discussed or just even shown. He doesn't necessarily completely say it outright but you see it in the story and the plot and the world building and that's so cool. And I think his ability to again capture like childhood innocence and fear and to produce this fear is so cool. It's so interesting to see because these are two things that you normally don't put together. Or if you do, it's like a bedtime story or a horror story and you as an adult usually don't feel that fear. But the way that he writes makes you feel nervous for these children. And I just think that that's something that is rarely seen. But I think overall the story is about magical realism, it's about parents, it's about childhood trauma, it's about friendship for sure. But I think above all, it's about remembering who you once were. And I think just seeing him going back from being a middle-aged man in the present and then also going back to his memories as a seven-year-old going through this insane story. I think it's so cool to see like the balance of both of these things and the story is just so outlandish. It's so different but it's really beautiful and there were certain things that I highlighted that I really resonated with and thought was really cool and I think that a lot of people would enjoy it. So I definitely recommend this one as well. Again I gave this four out of five stars. It was really fun. It was really interesting and just so different from anything that I've ever read before. Whew that was a lot of yapping from me. I cannot believe y'all just let me sit here and talk about books all day. It is crazy but those are all the books I wanted to talk about today. I definitely read a few other books that were just lackluster but those are a few of my favorite books from this month or just books that I definitely just wanted to talk about or touch on and that is it for me I love y'all so much and I'm excited to see what we read in October I think we're gonna read a lot of fun a lot of eerie and a lot of spooky so get excited I'll see y'all in the next video bye